So Tim and I are out winter camping north of the Corthus and uh, I thought I'd spend the day, we'd go for a hike and do some bark ID. So twig ID, uh, that's essential to know in the winter time, uh, but sometimes you don't see the twig because the twig's way up there. <laughs> uh, so you look at the bark. Uh, this first one here, this is ironwood. And how it's, I know it's ironwood. First of all, it's not a big tree. There's lots of them around here. I was told by uh, an old timer that actually, if there's ironwood left in the bush under the maple, that means it once was grazed by cattle at uh, that area because they won't touch ironwood. It's called ironwood because the settlers used to use this for uh, uh, their, uh, their axles, ironwood. And when you put your chainsaw through it, it'll spark. That's how dense the, the, the wood is. So it's really good firewood if you find a dead one. But anyway, how to identify it. First, first, first of all, the first thing you do is you look up, way up. And the species we're going to go over is like, there's alternative branching and opposite branching. So opposite branching means that there's one branch on one side and opposite of that, there's another branch. Whereas alternative is there's branches everywhere, okay? To minimize uh, your think tank here, all ashes and all maples are opposite branching and dogwood, but that's a bush. All the other um, trees, uh, twigs, uh, branches are alternative. So this is alternative. So first of all, if you look up and it's it's not opposite, then you've got four species uh, eliminated. But I, I know this ironwood, first of all, because it's not too big, but look how shaggy it is. Just like that and, and the outer bark the exfoliates. And um, got a little bit of a yellowish tinge to it. Uh, but you can even, even when you touch it, you can feel how dense it is. I know that sounds silly, but man, that is one solid piece of wood. So uh, yeah, ironwood. And there's lots around here. Cool. Um, right behind it, I'm guessing this is a beach, <laughs> which does not look like a beach at all. Beach looks like elephant's legs, nice and smooth, gray. Um, and uh, that's what people unethically signed their, their lover's name in. But this is a, a d dying beach. It's uh, dying from beach elm disease. Or not beach elm, what am I talking about? Uh, beach rot, no it's not. <laughs> okay, I can't think of the name of the disease. It, it, it's uh, an insect that creates a fungal infection, whatever. But the beach are all dying off um, in the Halliburton area, just south of Algonquin. And yeah, so that doesn't look like a normal beach. But this over here looks like an ash. Okay. That is an ash. So that's an ash tree. I thought it was a basswood at first, but it's an ash tree. And it's a younger one, so it's not as prominent, but you look for the diamonds in the bark. There's diamonds in the bark, and the, the bark is like 3D. It's really pushing out at you. So uh, yeah, and it's a dead, because of the uh, ash borer. But what else we've got right beside it here, we've got maple. So I'll go over maples a lot further down the trail. But I know this is sugar maple, not red maple. First of all, red maple likes their feet being wet. It more grows like a, like a weed, to be quite honest. It's a very soft hardwood. And maple, sugar maple, is hard maple. And very good, good firewood. It's the best to get maple syrup out of because it's the highest density of sugar in, in the sap. But how do you know it's maple? Well, first of all, opposite branching. So it's either an ash or maple. It's not an ash, we just saw an ash. And I know it's a maple because of the bark, that gray colored bark to it and opposite branching. So it's either a sugar maple or a red maple. Red maple does not have that prominent of bark on it. It's more smooth and a lot softer gray than the maple. So I'll show you some better examples, I think. <laughs> bark ID is not easy, by the way. Just say. Another species right here. This is oak. I'm guessing red oak. See the reddish tinge in the bark? Okay. And also when you look up, oak are all like a spooky, ghostly tree, like a skeleton <laughs> hovering over you. So look up here. And when you see these massive oak, especially in a, out in a the field, they'll, they'll be like that. They'll, their, their crown is spread way out and all crooky and stuff like that. And, and also, all I have to do is look down in the snow. <laughs> oak doesn't like losing its leaves in the winter. So some of them are dropping off because it's windy out. 
And uh, I know this is oak because it's pointy, lobed, pointy. And I know it's red oak because red is pointy like the devil and white oak or bur oak is round and not red. Okay, that's kind of cool. But yeah, you shouldn't have to depend on finding a leaf on the ground. You just have to look at that bark. See the reddish hue to it? And it's also three-dimensional as well. That bark is coming out just like a, a maple. Well, the maple will not have that color of red in it. Here's another example of, a, of a, an ash, a white ash. Um, black ash always wants their feet wet. So we're up on a ridge here, so it can't be black ash, so it's white ash. And it's also dead from the boar. But uh, see the diamonds, really prominent. You might get it confused with basswood, and I do as well, because um, basswood's similar to that. But if you put your finger in it and your thumbnail goes right into the bark, basswood is the softest, well, I think the softest, I'm pretty sure the softest hardwood. It's like cork, it feels like cork, or ash doesn't. All right, off to another one. Okay, another species. This is um, a carnivorous, cone bearing. Uh, you don't call them evergreen because there is one carnivorous tree that loses its needles in the fall and that's a tamarack or eastern larch. So the term evergreen really shouldn't be used. So it's carnivorous, not deciduous. Soft wood inside, good to get a fire going but not a good all night burn. This is a glorious white pine, it's Ontario's tree. First of all, it's needles. It's really cold out today. <laughs> needles, bundles of five, all the other pine have needles of two. Very soft as well, but forget the needles because we're looking at the bark. The bark has this reddish hue to it, not 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 purplish like the uh, the oak, and it's a carnivorous too. You see the needles, but see how thick that bark is. It's very three dimensional, and that's how the big mother white pine can withstand a, um, a forest fire. So the fire will come through, burn all the underbrush. This guy will survive, or her will survive, because of that thick bark, and then drop its cones and then restart the forest as long as it's a, a normal burn, right? So it's kind of cool. Way up, way up. Look way up there. And uh, it's what's called a wolf tree. So they, there's too many branches coming out of this tree. So the, the loggers, when they come, came through here year, years ago, they left it because there was too many knots in the, in the wood. And it's basically a wolf tree that just left it alone. The only problem with that is that that's the only mother tree dropping the cones here. So genetically wise, it's not the greatest for the forest. <laughs> they left the garbage basically. Have a good close look at this. That's a perfect uh, roosting area for an owl, by the way, at night. So here's a young white pine. So see the difference? It's just starting to break through. Uh, before maturity, the bark here. It's, it's cracking, but not three-dimensional, not thick like the, the mother big tree we just saw. But for a young white pine, really naughty. That sounds funny, naughty. Uh, but also, you can look right up there and you'll see the white pine needles, five needles, bundles. And uh, it's, pr it's pretty much right close to the mother tree where it, uh, it got its seed from. So, yeah, young white pine. Some textbooks, old textbooks, show that moss grows only on the north side of the tree. We're facing south right now. <laughs> and if you look at it, it grows all the way around the tree. So don't believe that one, okay? Why the textbooks say that is, is usually is the darker side is the north facing side of a hill. And therefore, more shade and lichen and moss like the shade. But that's not always the case, so don't believe that one. Okay, here's a species for you. <laughs> Identify this bark is the bark of a telephone pole. <laughs> and that's a raven, not a crow. Ravens go, caw, caw, the throat. Here, and crows go, caw, caw. And they hate each other, big time. They'll talk each other. True story. All right, here's another one. This is hemlock. You'd say it looks like white pine. I always said white pine when I was out there and said pine. I think I did. Anyway, yeah, this is a hemlock. So it has that big ridged uh, um, scale like the pine, white pine does, but it has purple underneath right there. Really prominent purple. And huge trees, by the way. Look at the needles. 
like that. There's the needles. They're very solid green, so it kind of would look like a balsam, but the balsam, uh, a bark of a balsam looks totally different. I'll get to that, but this is a hemlock. Shorter needles than a balsam. Grow out from the sides, not around like a spruce. So the spruce will go all the way around this. But the key thing of the hemlock is underneath, really prominent stoma lines. So these white, two, two white lines. And that's hemlock. But the bark, just look at the bark, if you can't see the needles, uh, has that really purplish color. Okay, got another one. We're going down to the lowlands, so we're gonna get some of those species. This is uh, cedar, eastern white cedar, because there's lots of other cedars. We have red cedar around here too, more south though. But, I mean, the, the needle of the cedar is really easy. It looks, it looks like a bunch of fish scales on top of each other. But if it's a really big cedar and you can't see the needles, uh, look at the bark. Really shaggly bark. Makes a really good fire tinder, that stuff right there. Get a fire going. Kind of reddish hue on the inner, inside the bark. I think it, the deer has been banging away at that. But yeah, really good indicator of a cedar, eastern white cedar. Is that shaggy, shaggy bark with a reddish tone inside. But really loose bark too, right? Not three dimensional like the pine, or the white pine. But yeah, there's nothing else that looks like eastern white cedar. And that makes a really good tea. Actually, we're gonna have a boil up soon. Um, and uh, having a cup of tea from eastern white cedar needles, especially in, in the new ones in the early spring, has more vitamin C, or the same vitamin C, as five oranges. I love that. So, ID by bark is, is great in the wintertime. But also by silhouette, even by aerial photographs, so look down on a tree, you can identify it by crown. It takes a lot of practice, so we're not doing that today. <laughs> but the silhouette, if you look behind me, along the shoreline, right there, you'll see a mixture of hemlock, spruce, and pine. The pine, the old uh, um, group of seven pine along Georgia Bay, its needles go up. Like this, sorry, like this. All right, spruce goes down like a, like a, hmm, like a, what's it called? It's called, it's like a, hmm, like a, like a cone shape, yes. Um, pine, flippy of the bird. The others don't, they remember it because of that. So yeah, a whole bunch of white pine along there because their pines are going, or needles are going up. I hope I'm making sense. I'm getting a little cold. Here's white pine right there. Bundles of five, really soft. This here, resin, if you can find a bunch of it, amazing fire starter. Yellow bellied sapsucker has come here, drilled those holes, flew away, waited for the sap to ooze out. This is in the summer. Insects are attracted to that sap. They get stuck. Sapsucker comes back and eats the insects and has a little bit of dessert too. So I know this is not bark, these, these are buds, and I've done a, a bud ID video already, but I just wanted to show you this. This is a red oak. You know it's an oak, whether it's bur oak, white oak, or red oak, because there's more than one terminal bud. And it's kind of cool why deer love eating oak more than anything else in the wintertime, like they did right here. That is a rabbit, or sorry, a deer chewing. You know it's a deer chewing because it's bitten off by his molar, Rabbits slice it off on the side with its uh, front teeth. And I know it's red oak, not the other yolk, yolk, <laughs> oak, because it's red. If it was white oak or bur oak, it would be dull, round, not pointy, like the devil, just like it's a uh, leaf. And um, yeah, it wouldn't be red. So there you go. Now this is red maple. It's down in the lowland area. But see, it's a, it's a smaller one, not like I showed you with the sugar maple, but see how lighter color the bark is. It's opposite branching, so it's either an ash or a maple. This isn't a sugar maple because it's, this is a lot softer in color, a lot softer gray and smoother. And usually they grow like this a whole bunch together because it is like a weed tree, okay? If you do see the buds, oh, here's a bud, right there. I don't know if you can get a look at that, but that is red maple because it's, it's a, Dull at the top, sugar maple's pointy, but also it's red all the way down. See that? All the way down. 
So a sugar maple is more chocolatey brown, doesn't have that red color. But yeah, the bark, not the, not the twig, we're doing the bark today. Soft gray color, more like a weed tree. There you go. So this is not a hemlock, it's a balsam. First of all, the balsam is, is a weed tree. It really is a weed tree. It doesn't grow to, to big a size. The needles look like the hemlock, but they're duller green, they're longer. And if you really look close, they don't come out to the sides. It grows all the way around, but they push out to the sides. So like where spruce grows all the way around. But the bark, let's get in and look, have a look at the bark. Oh yeah, there's stoma lines on the bottom as well, but they're very dull compared to the hemlock. And yeah, and the needles are a lot shorter. But the bark, not at all anything like the hemlock. And when it gets a little bit bigger, we'll find some down the trail a bit. You'll get these little resin blisters. They're right there, like that. So that resin comes out, amazing fire starter. So it's full of pimples. Really smooth bark as well, not jagged like the hemlock. And uh, yeah, and this is what you, a lot of people use for the Christmas tree. Smells nice too. Oh, this is a better example. This is the resin blisters I'm talking about, like that, that gooey stuff. Okay, really gooey too, so. But full of pimples. They can burst. Another tree, another carnivorous. Red pine. Okay, well, the needles, bundles of two, really long, really pointy, makes a good scrubbing, scrubber for your pots while camping. But the bark is so easy. It's layered upon layer, I'm layered. Two layers, I don't want to hurt the tree. Um, layers of that, and it's red all the way up from the base, all the way up, way up to the top, red pine. The only one you'll get confused with when you see it is Scots pine, and that's not a native species. It was brought here um, from Europe, I believe, Scotland. <laughs> and Scots pine is red at the top, and even more orangey red than this, but not red all the way down. So you can't get this confused. You can't miss uh, ID a red pine. It's just red flaky bark that's layered. And um, yeah, good trees, good solid trees. And needles are two, really long, longest of all the carnivorous around here. And yeah, makes a good way to clean your pot instead of a moldy scrub bush you, brush you have in your, your, your pack for 10 days. You cool. Okay, I didn't expect to find this one. Kind of cool. It's a really common uh, maple, but it really is like a bush more than a tree. It's striped maple, and I'll go get a close up in a second, but it's greenish bark with blackish uh, lines. Striped maple. See the stripes in it? And really soft wood, too. Some people call it moose maple, I think, because moose like eating it for browsing. This is a really big striped maple. It's usually a bush. But yeah, see the stripes in it? Green stripes. More olive green than anything. So here's a couple more people should know. This is a uh, white birch. Some people call it silver birch, but actually in the bush it's white birch. And this is very flammable. Uh, good fire starter because it has resin in it. Yes, you don't strip the bark from the tree and girdle it. That would be wrong. But if this, if you want a bit of this, just take that off because you're exfoliating or whatever that word is called, uh, it's skin. That's going to fall off anyway. So you can strip a little bit of that off. Just don't rip it off the bark. So white birch. Uh, it's got white coloring in it. It does look like uh, trembling aspen in a distance. I can't find any trembling aspen here, but in the distance the trembling aspen will look, look like a stand of birch because it has that white powdery substance on it, but it, when you look at it close, it's, it's not. It's got that yellowish bark to it, but anyway, I can't find any of that around. I'll have to do another video on that. So this is white birch, but right beside it, I'll get a better sample of that. Well, this is a better example. So this is yellow birch. Same thing, but it's yellowish bark instead of white. And it's good fire starter, not as good as white birch. And sometimes when they're young like this, this kind of looks like a white birch, but it is yellow. It's a really yellow tinge. Just get a fresh, see if I can find one here. First twig. Definitely yellow birch. It tastes like wintergreen. Makes an amazing tea, by the way. Uh, white birch tastes like a piece of wood. <laughs> sure. I didn't find this on our walk. I found this on our drive. So uh, we're ending the day here and uh, it's getting dark. So I better get back, but yeah. White birch, yellow birch. I think there's a better yellow birch down here a bit. So I'll show you. Right. 
So that's a better example of a yellow birch. You see how yellow it is compared to the white. Yeah, and when they get really big, the bark turns scaly a bit. So sometimes it's almost, you know, it's kind of difficult to know if it's a yellow birch or not when they're gigantic. And a lot of them were left by the loggers because um, they sunk uh, in the in the logging rafts going down across the lakes and down the rivers. They're really dense wood, and uh, well, after that they started using them for veneer and stuff like that. So, but back in the first logging days, they kind of left them. So there's massive ones in the bush somewhere. So this is a lot better example of a beech, the ones I was finding, because it's alive. <laughs> so it does have that smooth bark. Looks like an elephant's trunk or a leg. The leaves are still on it. The leaves are very, um, very prominent veined, and uh, they have a saw edge to each vein. So yeah, so again, beech love holding the leaves on for the winter. And the bud, when you look at the bud, I, don't know if I, I got a bud video I should just link to everybody, but I just want to show you that. It's a landslate, very elongated. Yeah, my students at risk call it the joint tree. This looks like a joint. <laughs> love them, love them to death. Yeah, beach. So here's a balsam. And uh, just want to show you this. I, I did a silhouette shot of how white pine are pointing their needles up and then spruce and, and balsam point down like a cone. And I hope those clips turn out, but if not, this is a good example of a balsam. Looks just like a Christmas tree. Needles pointing down like a cone. Very much a weed tree, right? If you look at this forest around us, there's some great maple, actually a lot more red maple than than sugar maple, yellow birch, white birch, a couple of beech, one oak, which I don't know why he's in there, and um, a whole pile of balsam. If you look through, it's all balsam, like a weed tree covering the bottom. And that kind of hurts the other trees because it, it uh, takes up sunroom. So the other trees have to grow up beyond the uh, balsam to get anywhere in life. <laughs> so that is a spruce, that's a white spruce. Um, black spruce wouldn't be growing around here, I don't think, we're not that far north, but it's a white spruce. And if you see really cl closely there, you can see, like, again, another purplish color when you flake off the, the skin. But uh, it's not a pine at all. The pine are elongated chunks. These are little chips of bark. And um, cone shape as well, so when you see, you see the silhouette, you, it's a giveaway. Yeah, and it can't be a balsam because it doesn't have the resin blisters. And that's too big for a balsam. I don't think a balsam would ever grow that big. Here we go. Black spruce would actually have a little top to it of needles, a little top, uh, top hat, a uh, clump of needles clustered at the top. White spruce looks just like a cone, so it doesn't have the top. Okay, so this is a great example of a uh, red maple, soft maple. So the branches are opposite up top. So it's either sugar maple, red maple, or uh, black ash, white ash. So smooth bark, it's a young one, um, but see how softer gray it is compared to the sugar maple. And it's in a swamp. So yeah, it likes its feet wet, not all the time, but. So this is a larger balsam. It has old blisters where the resin was, but they're all dried up. So that's a bad example to show you. I really want to show you one where it just bursts out like a pimple. But yeah, you'll see the scars of those pimples on the older balsam. Really smooth, thin bark. Nothing like a white pine or red pine or a hemlock. Yeah, cool. I just wanted to find the blisters. If I could only find a blister to squeeze, to show you. So that's what happens when you strip the, the full bark off a birch bark tree. You girdle it. Whether you kill it or not, that's a good question. Uh, but you could. So just take the flaky stuff or get it off the bottom if you can. This is a larger soft maple or red maple. And yeah, the, it, the bark isn't as smooth as the young one I showed you, but it's still softer gray than the hard maple. I thought I'd stop and show you this. This is a really good example. Um, Look at all the young beech in there. And I know it's all young beech because again, the, the leaves are staying on the, on the trees. So yeah, the, all the old beeches are dying off, but we got young beech coming up, so that's a good thing. 
Well, yeah, just so, so just by looking at the landscape, you, you figure out a tree before you even walk up to it. And what does it take to learn all of this? Bush time. Simple bush time. <laughs>